the Earth being round is not up for debate. The fact that evolution happens is not up for debate. The fact that people experience different things and look at the world differently is not up for debate. You know, someone else's experiences are not up for debate. I mean, unless you actually think they're lying about their experiences. But I mean, someone's, someone else's actual experiences are not up for debate. You, you really can't claim how other people feel, feel about something or should feel about something. Okay, you're not the dictator of them. Okay, I mean, yeah, you can judge them if you want, but you look like an ass. <clears throat> but most minorities have worries in their head. It may not be a big worry, but it's in the back of their mind that people are going to look at them like a bad stereotype. Okay. Gay men, even to this day, but it was so much worse in the 80s and the 90s, gay men have a worry that people look at them like, oh look, it's a queeny man who spreads STDs. Filthy, dirty person who spreads STDs. And that worry is in the back of the mind. And some of the reason why this worry is in the back of the mind is because of the knowledge of what the statistics are. And they usually don't want to be reminded of those statistics because it hurts. And when you tell them or they hear, well, gay people should stop spreading STDs, if their self-esteem is already low enough because of that sort of thing, or in addition to a number of other things that could be as well, but if that's already affecting their self-esteem, there's a good chance that when you tell them this, that they're no, lo they're no longer going to care whether or not they're someone that does spread STDs. Because they're already labeled that way anyway, so why should they care? You don't want to help them anyway. You just want to chastise them because they, well, you know... Uh, they, they're a demographic that uh, spreads STDs more. Well, let's just... Who cares anymore? I mean, the thing... The thing that we want to avoid at almost all costs is allowing people to get into that mindset of, well, what difference does anything make? That's what you want to avoid. And you can say, well, they shouldn't feel that way. Well, are you one of the people that fit that, that demographic? Oh, but they shouldn't feel that way. You don't get to dictate how other people feel. You don't get to dictate other people's experiences. So when those statistics get brought up over and over again, and the statements that are said, like what you heard in the 80s, especially the 80s, not as much the 90s, but it was there, well, gay people spread AIDS. Gay people spread AIDS. Or gay people need to stop spreading STDs. You know, it's not it's not just a message of hey, make sure you use condoms. Hey, make sure you do this. Hey, make sure you do this. Have as much sex as you want, but make sure you do these things. Okay? That was the answer at least at the time. Now a lot of it is prep. But, you know, use precautions. Hey, use precautions. Hey, make sure you use precautions. That's a different message. That's a different thing. And it doesn't affect people the same way as when they're, when they're told, well, gay people spread AIDS. Well, you know, they should grow a thicker skin. You aren't, you, if you're not of that demographic, then you have no fucking idea how it feels. And it seems that you're not even attempting 
to try to imagine how that feels. So now let's take black people. What do black people experience? Well, it shouldn't be any different because they're just people. It, it just astounds me that people that, that some people are like that. And I got sucked into that for a while myself, into that same mindset. I got sucked into that same thing for a while. But black people have a worry in their head that others view them, whether they do or not. That a worry that others view them as unintelligent and violent. They have that worry in their head. So when you keep bringing up these statistics, I mean, what is that supposed to tell them? They are, they're already worried about it. You can say, well, it doesn't look like they're worried about it. They're trying to stand tall. They're trying to persevere. I mean, do you just expect them to just kind of cower and, and not? I mean, I mean, what are you fucking expecting? Well, they need to shape their, their shit up. Well, the same thing should be said about these redneck, uh, these redneck places in the, in the fucking uh, uh, Bible Belt. Maybe they should shape up too. Oh, but we shouldn't tell people that they're bigoted. No matter how bigoted they are, because that hurts. Because white people's feelings are so, they're so fragile. And white people, they, we, they should be allowed to have the thinnest skin possible. But all minorities should have a thicker skin. But white people, it should be so thin because you can't tell white people that when they're being bigoted, they're being bigoted. You can't do that. No, don't tell white people they're being bigoted. Don't do it. Don't do it. It hurts them so badly. But black people need to stop committing crimes. But white, straight white men, they, 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 oh, don't tell them they're not being sensitive enough. Oh, gay people, they spread AIDS. But, what, but straight white people, oh no. Oh, someone said that I'm insensitive and, and don't care about other people's experiences. Oh, black people need to stop committing crimes. Oh, white people, my, my skin, my skin. Do you realize how fucking ridiculous it looks? This is why people get angry at this stuff. This is why people do this. I mean, what, what? So everyone else should grow a thicker skin except straight white men. Straight white men should be able to have the thinnest skin possible, but everyone else should have a thick skin. Do, do you realize the hypocrisy there? Well, as long as the law doesn't treat them differently, then they should feel exactly the same as me. I'm a white person. I'm a white guy. And they should feel the same way I do. You don't get to dictate how they feel. And I'm going to use this word. The fact that you think they should is the epitome of white privilege. I've tried avoiding using that word, but some of why I've wanted to stop making these kinds of videos is because I realize how strong and how loud the voices are and how bullying some of these voices are that want to declare that we shouldn't talk about these things because that would be, you know, people talking about that. Uh, th those are SJWs that are regressive because somehow it's regressive to try to get people to think about other people's experiences and it's regressive somehow to uh, try to be more empathetic and it's somehow not regressive to try to cram traditional viewpoints, traditional mindsets down everyone's throats and uh, it's somehow not regressive to tell all minorities to stop complaining about their experiences while uh, <laughs> 
trying to get some pity party because someone told you that you're being insensitive. Oh, they told me I'm insensitive because I told black people they should stop committing more crimes. They, I'm, they told me I'm insensitive because I said gay people should stop spreading AIDS. <laughs> Man, the straight white guys who have that kind of mindset are huge on this platform. They're huge. They've got armies of people to go bully people who, who dare to call out bigotry and, and, and racism and sexism and any of this stuff. Well, don't call any of it out because that's regressive. Calling out those things is regressive. Well, we're really not those things. But when you have these attitudes that's, that say, well, everyone else should grow thicker skin except me. How are you supposed to respond to that? How many people are just, like, well, just state the statistics and they, everything should shape up? Funny, you don't take that same attitude when some of these feminists out there uh, give statistics about straight white guys. It's a, well, the statistics aren't really true. The statistics about black people are true. The statistics about gay people are true. But the statistics about straight white guys aren't true. You can't say that. You hate men. But you know, for everyone but uh, straight white men, uh, they'll have the attitude, well, you know, sometimes some shame does some good. Well, well, well people should listen to us because we're in the majority and, and they're not. And we get to rule the roost because we're in the majority. We deserve to have a thin skin, and everyone else deserves to have a thick skin, because we're in the majority. But if you want to take care of problems in the black community, then offer solutions. And then within those solutions, you can talk about the statistics, right? Mix them in that way. Well, you're trying to dictate the way I talk to them. Well, if you talk to them this way, this is how they're going to interpret it. They already have paranoia in the back of their minds on this. So all it feels like you're doing to them is saying, fuck you, how, can, how dare you make me think about you? I want to think about me. And if I was in your shoes, I would do this. As if they have your experiences. And they don't. They don't have your experiences. You have your own experiences. Everyone has their own experiences. And yes, there are things on, more, on a more individual level. There are many experiences that have not a... I mean, most experiences have not a damn thing to do with the demographic someone fits. But the parts that do have to do with the demographic someone fits holds a pretty big significance in someone's life. You know, I, I, I'm sorry for calling some of you uh, retarded. It's probably the wrong words to use. Ignorant, maybe. Willfully ignorant. Stubborn. Closed-minded. Unwilling to look at other people's uh, viewpoints. Um, apathetic and this feeling like well your experiences uh, sh you know that should apply to everyone else it's uh, it, it's mind boggling it's mind boggling and the people that can only think in that sort of monolithic me 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 sort of way people that are usually in that sort of it's, it's almost a form of xenophobia, but not quite. But you just can't process what other people are actually going through. And I hate to say it, it's especially in the atheist community. Pe people who match that stereotype are generally on the right. And if they're not completely on the right, then they're on the right side of the, uh, the, the, the you know, the, the left quadrant of uh, the political compass. If they happen to somehow fit somewhere on the left, they are the furthest right to that left quadrant. 
one of the left quadrants. You know, they don't want change. Let's grasp on to, tradi to, tradi to, to traditions. The reason why I mentioned the atheist thing is, I mean, I'm sorry, but I think if you break apart, you know, how, how would you treat someone? I mean, you, you, you want to treat someone the way that you believe they would want to be treated. Um, yeah, that, that occurs more with the right-wingers who are religious than the ones who are not, than the, the ones who are, I'm an atheist. If they're, if they're atheists, it's like there's, morality is just gone. You have no philosophy to keep you a, a better person. There, there's, there's nothing. It's just completely missing. And so in those cases, the right-wingers who are religious are actually more moral in the sense of treat others the way you want to be treated. They're more moral in how they treat others than the right-wingers that are atheists. And that's really a sad thing to say.